Look, there's a huge amount of scaremongering that's going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. Now, the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit, All right, let's be very clean. clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money, we save 39 billion, we spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity as long as we leave the customs union because that's crucial. We can then have a free port. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. And free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion unless our negotiators are incredibly weak. And that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union. Because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are bust. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that. And this is the worst deal ever in history to pay 39 billion pounds for nothing guaranteed in return please welcome to the stage richard tice hello welcome brexiteers hello chester and it's fantastic on this sunny afternoon this bank holiday afternoon to see so many of you here thank you for turning out for this brexit Rally. Uh, I'm Richard Tice. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been involved in setting up small businesses, medium sized businesses, and large businesses. I've been involved in building thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of jobs. I know what it is to do deals. And rightly or wrongly, I used to be a lifelong member of the Conservative Party. I know none of us are perfect. <laughs> um, but I accepted the invitation to be the chairman of the Brexit party, which we launched just a matter of a few weeks ago. And we, you've probably noticed we've been quite busy. <laughs> and um, I thought we'd just show you, uh, before we carry on, our launch video, which hopefully you can see on the screen, assuming the technology works, uh, as to um, uh, the launch of the Brexit party. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. We are standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. As you'll hear later, he hasn't lost his touch, he's just warming up. But it's important we have a bit of audience participation. So I just want to check, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do we want? Brexit. Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit. Brexit! When do we want it? Now! Excellent, we'll just keep you warmed up later as we go on. So, um, of course, we all know what business is about, we know what leadership is about, but unfortunately, this Prime Minister has led us to complete and utter humiliation. Yes, we've been humiliated, not once writing a begging letter, but she's had to write a begging letter twice to overseas leaders asking how we can conduct ourselves in our own country. It's outrageous, a complete humiliation, incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, MPs, 
even as we speak, trying to do a dirty, dodgy, nasty backroom deal, creating some form of coalition of politicians against us, the people. And we know. We know that what they're proposing is the worst deal in history. They want to sell our country down the river. And the civil service have proved themselves to be completely not up to the job. So it's time, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to take on the vested interests of the establishment, the vested interests of the civil service and the multinationals. It's time for the Brexit party because we stand for competent, capable, common sense politics. That's what we stand for. And we know there's a huge opportunity to change politics for good in this country because the two party system has failed us. It's let us down. Westminster has proved it's no longer up to the job, job and it is time for change. People want leaders that are successful, that have achieved, that know how to make things happen, get stuff done, spend our taxpayers' cash properly, wisely and smartly. And that's what we've got in the incredible candidates up and down the country for this European election some of whom you'll hear from shortly. Never before, ladies and gentlemen, has the opportunity been greater. Never before has the appetite been stronger for change. So we've got to use these European elections. Everybody's got to vote. Tell your friends, your family, the friends of friends. We've got to send a very clear message back to Westminster. Leave means leave. Let's check it. Leave means leave. Thank you very much. So, we need to send that message and we need to make it very clear. We want strong, clear, determined leadership because Brexit stands for opportunity. So let's embrace it with enthusiasm, with ambition, with excitement, with confidence and with belief, ladies and gentlemen, in our great nation. Let's believe in Britain and I can tell you that our speakers here, like all of you, they massively believe in Britain. And our first speaker is a doctor from the world of the healthcare. He's very experienced, he's now also an author, TV commentator, but as a trained GP, he was actually, who remembers John Craven's news round? Yeah. I know, I'm sorry, it's slightly ageist, but I remember too. Um, but actually our first speaker, David Bull, Dr. David Bull, he was, he was the first person to speak about healthcare issues for children on news round just a few years ago. So please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. David Bull. Please welcome to the stage, David Bull. A very good afternoon to you ladies and gentlemen my name is Dr David Bull I am a medical doctor I'm a television presenter and I am a very passionate campaigner now I have spent the last 24 years fighting to improve the health of every single person in this country I'm a great believer that knowledge is power and the more information that I can give you, you can then make really positive choices to change your lives in all aspects of your lives, in health, in politics and in everything that you do. I've been involved in some very, very important campaigns. I've been campaigning to clean up our dirty hospitals which are filthy and they need serious attention. I've also campaigned so that every single child that is born in Britain today is now tested for the life-threatening condition cystic fibrosis. We have now implemented that and that has saved thousands of children's lives. I'm I've also campaigned to improve sexual health for young people. I'm lobbying for the introduction of prophylaxis for HIV so we can end HIV in this country and around the world forever. I'm working with elderly people because you know what? The elderly people are ignored. They need to be treated with dignity and with respect and that is not happening in our hospitals, in our care homes and in society in general. 
And I'm also very, very passionate that every child who goes to a British state school needs to have at least one hot meal a day because children are hungry and they cannot concentrate. And when they can't concentrate, they don't do well in exams and they don't achieve. And it's time that we gave every single child in Britain the same opportunity. Now, the, these are really, really important campaigns, but the campaign we are now fighting together is the most important campaign of my life, because we are now campaigning to respect the will of the people. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why this is so important, because I fundamentally think democracy is in threat. There is a fundamental fragmentation of democracy. And you know, here in the Northwest, people are livid. There is such anger at what is going on, and it is going across the political spectrum. It doesn't matter where you previously thought you were from, whether you were Tory, Labour or Lib Dem. This is about everyone. We are fighting to have our wishes respected. Now, many of my friends are, are Remainers and they say, well, you didn't know what you were voting for. <laughs> did you know what you were voting for? Yeah. Yes, you did. We were leaving the EU, we were leaving the uh, single market and we were leaving the customs union. You know, it was very, very simple um, that we were doing those things. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know, the other thing is that I, it really struck me at the time of that was that politicians of all sides said they would respect the result of the referendum. And have they done that? No. no, they haven't. So what happened? Well, we had a vote. We had the largest ever democratic vote we have ever seen. 17.4 million people voted to leave. That's over 30 million people voted. And here in the North West, something like three and a half million people voted to leave. And I remember the night of the election where David Dim be actually said and that's it we are out yes. we thought we'd won yes. but have we left yes. no three years later we have not left and that's because the politicians in Westminster are desperate for us not to leave and they are doing everything in their power to ensure that we do not leave the institution now Theresa May has said no deal is better than a bad deal repeatedly this is not a bad deal. It is a shocking deal. It's a terrible deal. It's a deal that if it approached you in the street, you would run away from. It is a terrib terrible de deal indeed. She's already brought it back three times to the House of Commons. I think, uh, as you heard from Richard, the European elections were so terrible that she will try and get something cobbled together and bring it back again. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I'm beginning to think the House of Commons is looking like some enormous psychiatric institution. <laughs> I want to say something very quickly about medicine. I know time is short. You know, there's a lot of misinformation and people saying that actually if we go to a WTO clean Brexit, there'll be no medicines. The health service won't cope. There'll be no drugs, no antibiotics, and we're all going to get some terrible disease. It is not true. Not only is it not true, it is incredibly dangerous. And it is frightening elderly people and frightening vulnerable people. And it needs to stop. Because medicine, I'll explain why. Medicine is global and it is incredibly flexible. And here are five quick points you need to know about healthcare. The trade with Europe is bilateral. We import stuff from Europe, we export stuff from Europe, we trade under European standards, so therefore a deal is very easy to do. Secondly, big pharmaceutical companies have footprints both in the EU and in the UK, so it's not an issue. The media also don't tell you that we make drugs in this country and we have some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in this country. But we should be looking bigger than Europe. We should be looking around the world. Let's take India. India makes now a third of the world's generic medicines. By 2050, they will make half of the world's medicines. 
India, places like Israel and that very small country called the United States make medicines. So medicines are not an issue. And if the EU says to us, well, actually, we're not going to trade with you and they have some sort of hissy fit and take their football and walk off the pitch, we will take our football and go and trade with the United States and buy in blood and immunizations and the drugs that we need. I just want to finish by saying, you know, fundamentally, the reason that I'm here is I believe that this is about democracy. This is about upholding the will of the people. This is about what you actually voted for. And, you know, this is a very important time. We need to send a message to the politicians in Westminster that their time is up. It is time to shuffle off those green benches and leave with a one-way exit. It cannot go on any longer. This really, and I can't emphasize this enough, is such a pivotal moment in the history of this country because we are fighting for a free, independent, self-governing country. And you know what? With your help, we will win. Well done. Excellent. Isn't he great? Dr. David Bull, ladies and gentlemen, he's a star. He's, a, he's an absolute star. He's also got a fantastic suntan. I promised I wouldn't say that. But anyway, you know, we can have a bit of fun with politics as well. Um, it takes real courage to be able to go from, you know, a very successful professional and TV career to face the abuse, the trolling, as you stand up, you put your head above the parapet, and to have the quality of candidates we've got, like David, and like our next candidate, who's from the world of business, he's an entrepreneur, he's been involved in technology companies, uh, he's also now currently involved in the property industry. Uh, he asked me to say that he's suave and sophisticated. I'll let you form your own mind. But please welcome to the stage, AJ Jagota. Please welcome to the stage, AJ Jagota. Brexiteers! <laughs> it feels great to be here in Chester. I'm feeling excited, <laughs> energised, and I'm so looking forward to the 23rd of May. Are you? <laughs> First, let me thank you all for being here and those watching on live stream for the fantastic support you have shown all of us candidates. It really does mean a lot. So thank you. So my name is AJ Jagota. I've created businesses in various sectors over the past 25 years. My parents came to Britain from India in the 1950s. I come from a working class family my mother working in a factory and my father working as a coal miner for 40 years. I personally have always been so grateful for the opportunities made available to me in this great country. So both of my parents are lifelong Labour supporters. Don't be so harsh. So imagine when their only son joined the Conservative Party. Oof. But then imagine their shock when said very son got elected to be the chairman of his local association. I can tell you there were some interesting conversations and debates around the dinner table. But friends, in January of this year, I resigned. <laughs> Frankly, I had had enough. 
So, you may ask, why had I come to this conclusion? Well, you may recall, in 2016, we had a thing called a re referendum, and they asked us, the good people of this country, to vote. So let's go through what happened in that vote. 16.1 million of them voted to remain while 17.4 million of us voted to leave. There's more. So across this great land, 242 constituencies voted to remain. But 406 constituencies voted to leave. And three regions voted to remain. Bless them. Nine regions voted to leave. So like you, I believed we had won the argument and we were set to leave. But, you could detect the but. My friends, in a far away place called Westminster, there's a group of call themselves MPs and in direct contrast to you and I, the people, they voted 160 leave and 486 of them voted to remain. And for the last three years, they have done everything to thwart that referendum result. That is why I decided to stand for the Brexit Party. And like you, friends, we all stand together. We stand for democracy. We can change politics for the good. But let me remind you, what is broken with the two-party system and what they've done thus far? They have given us nothing but, for those at the back that can't see, it's fudge. <laughs> so join with me and let's go through our two-party system. What has the Conservative Party given us? Fudge. What has Theresa May given us? Fudge. What has the Labour Party given us? Fudge. What has Jeremy Corbyn given us? And what are the Conservative Party and the Labour Party trying to cobble together now, which is a temporary customs union until 2022? My friends, it's only more fudge. I don't know about you, but I've had enough fudge for the last three years to last me a lifetime. So my friends, we need to send a message loud and clear on May the 23rd to those in that faraway place we call Westminster. We have had enough, enough of the old politicians with the same old politics. And when they say, oh, but this is a very complex issue. And politics is about making difficult decisions. We've heard it. I say, no, no, no. Politics is about making the right decisions. But we need you. We need you to help to ensure we win. This is not just about winning it on social media, via the Twitter and Snap Numpty and the Clegg books. But more importantly, we need to win it. You need to talk to your family, your friends, when you're at work, when you're in the pub. Ensure you win the argument for democracy. And tell everybody, on the 23rd of May, they too should stand with us for our democracy. On the 23rd of May, 
There is only one party in town, and it's the Brexit party. Thank you, and let's change politics together for good. Well done. Brilliant. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> We have to get trust back in democracy. And here, the UK, the mother of all democracies, it's unbelievable that it should be being taken away from us. But our next speaker is someone who's had a fantastic career in a few phases. Her first phase was to be a member of parliament for some party for 23 years. But that was just phase one. Then she realized that her real calling actually was phase two, her TV career. So she thought she could teach us all how to dance on Strictly Come Dancing. And then, and then not content with that, not content with that, she carried on with determination, with celebrity Big Brother. And now, not content with all of that, she's back, she's with us, she's with the Brexit party, before we welcome Anne to the stage, let's just see her on the video. We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party. And we've got the worst Parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. No, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and Parliament. So what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. Now we've seen That's what I want. Please welcome to the stage. Anne Widdicombe. Right. Can Britain remain a member of the EU and make our own laws? No. Can we remain a member of the EU and control our own borders? No. Can we remain a member of the EU and set up our own trade deals? No. And can we remain a member of the EU and be governed by our own democratically elected government? No. Well, those four no's are the reason that we voted to leave the EU. Yeah. And those snooty, patronising nincompoops who say in their complacency, oh poor dears, they didn't know what they were voting for should actually take a look at what they were voting for because they were voting to keep Britain subservient to a foreign power. <laughs> and we voted clearly and decisively to leave. And the politicians promised us that they would honour the result of the referendum. The trouble for them was, it wasn't the result they wanted. It was the result the people wanted. And they have spent the last three years trying to frustrate putting into practice that referendum. Now, we have just delivered them an almighty shock. And they got that shock on Thursday when Britain went to the polls or actually an awful lot of it didn't bother going to the polls. And many thousands of people, about 40,000, spoiled their ballot papers and wrote on those ballot papers, Brexit Party! <laughs> And as a result of that shock, Jeremy Corbyn 
now finally realizes that he has to do something that he has to give some semblance of believing in leaving the EU so he is on the back foot and does Theresa May take advantage of that to leave does she take advantage of the fact that now he is in a very weak position too and just wants a resolution no she offers him a customs union she offers him the single market she offers him a whole lot of EU law to be continued that is what she does at this crucial time for Britain we have a Prime Minister who has not even reached the level of leadership skills required for Brown Owl <laughs> But the message of the Brexit party is we do not have to put up with this. And one of two things happens. Either Britain leaves the EU or we will make sure that this current batch of politicians leave Parliament. <laughs> And that's why I have joined the Brexit Party. Why I am standing for the Brexit Party. Why I believe that the future of Britain is only safe if it is in the hands of the Brexit Party. And what we have to do now is to keep up the energy which sent them that shock on Thursday which said that we will put up no longer with the fudge and the incompetence and the sheer cowardice of the negotiations which has gone on. It isn't just that 17.4 million voters are being betrayed, future generations are being betrayed. And we are betraying the efforts, the legacy and the sacrifice of two generations ago. And so we have said enough. Deliver Brexit, deliver it now, deliver it decisively. But if you give us something that is a Brexit in nothing except name, then we will make sure that at the next general election, we are the ones who will deliver Brexit and we will deliver it and we will honor the result of the referendum and we will show this lot how to govern. I promised you she was just warming up for phase three of her career and I think she's absolutely proven it. She's an inspiration to us all. Never, ever, ever give up. Now to our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen. We've had doctors, we've had entrepreneurs, and now we've got a dentist. Another professional, highly skilled. He's also a trade unionist representing some 30,000 dentists. And he's been a lifelong, almost lifelong, Eurosceptic. He was involved some 20 odd years ago in the Danish campaign uh, against the Maastricht Treaty. So he knows a thing or two about Euroscepticism and about people being asked to vote a second time when they got it wrong the first time. It's fantastic to have him with us. Please welcome to the stage, Henrik Overgaard Nielsen. Please welcome to the stage, Henrik Obergaard Nielsen. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Danish, and I know some of you might be a little suspicious of me, 
but I come in peace even though my Viking ancestors invaded Chester just over a thousand years ago. So um, I will address you as cousins. I'm European. I was born and bred in Denmark. My favorite lager is German and I even have an Italian rescue dog. I'm far from the xenophobe Chaka and his chums has claimed make up 17.4 million of his fellow citizens. Support for Brexit is not only on the right of the political spectrum, it is across the board and the Brexit party is a good example of that. Far-right parties do not speak for me, nor do they speak for the overwhelming majority of this country. Having come here as a European immigrant over 20 years ago, I can safely say that the rhetoric which comes from those on the far right does not represent what I have experienced. Britain has been open and welcoming to me. The Brexit party brings together people from all backgrounds and challenges the dangerous stereotype which media outlets like the BBC push. Yeah. How will they square the idea of me, a socialist, NHS dentist who hasn't treated a private patient in the 20 years I've worked here? At I'll give you my business card later. <laughs> a trade union representative who used to live in a commune with being a Brexit supporter. In 2016, every household in the UK was sent the official leaflet from the government. It only cost taxpayers nine million pounds. And in there it stated that if we voted to leave, then we would leave both the single market and the customs union. Over 90% of current MPs have been elected on a manifesto that clearly states that they will respect the referendum of 2016. So how come I am seen as the extremist when I argue for that to be delivered? Yeah. What we need is a Brexit on WTO terms, no ifs, no buts, Let's just get out. Yeah. Unlike the Labour Party elite, most of whom would not know a fishing boat from a yacht, I have spent many days catching cod and eel in the freezing cold Baltic Sea because my family are fishermen in Denmark and fully understand the devastating effect the EU's common fisheries policy has had on fishermen. Fishing areas like Greenfield, Muston and Connors Key have all suffered. Bigger ports like Fleetwood, which was once England's third biggest fishing port, employing 11,000 people, has not one full-time fisherman left. What we need is to leave the EU and re-establish a 200-mile exclusive zone where all the fish belongs to us. This would mean that we could again catch our own fish and be self-sufficient instead of importing over 40% of the fish we eat as we do at the moment. In June 2016, I, unlike most people in this country, felt that I'd seen it all before. It took me back to the 2nd of June 1992, when the Danish people stood up to the might of the European establishment and voted no to the Maastricht Treaty. I was part of that campaign in Denmark, and the sense of relief in 2016 was on par with what I had felt almost 25 years before. However, the relief didn't last. What is happening in the UK now happened in Denmark in 1992. The establishment did not like the answer the people gave them, so they told us to vote again. Sounds familiar? Yes. 
The arguments in 1992 are the same as the arguments in 2019. The EU has a huge democratic deficit. Brussels is unaccountable, secretive and distant. Seventeen point four million Leave voters have been left politically homeless and a lot of them say Why should I bother to vote again? Nobody pays any attention to my vote anyway But I say to those people vote in this election give the MPs a kick up the backside the Brexit party will speak for you Britain is my home. I brought my children up in this country and I worked and paid taxes here for over 20 years. What happened in Denmark was that democracy was overturned, voters ignored and the decision of the people cast aside and I will not let that happen to the country I now call home. The Brexit party is the way we can stop history repeating itself. And I urge you all to sign up, support and vote for the Brexit Party on the 23rd of May. Thank you very much. Well done, Henrik. Well done, Henrik. Fantastic speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, a short interlude for a little bit of a news update. The good news is, amazing news, fantastic news, Prince Harry and Meghan have had a little boy. Personally, of course, I hope that they call him Nigel, but anyway. <laughs> um, uh, too much to ask, I guess. King Nigel is not a, uh, <laughs> Anyway, our next speaker, I'm getting carried away. Um, our next speaker is a passionate activist for free speech. She's an author. She's written a book. I find that offensive. She's a pundit for a TV channel that we're not terribly pleased with at the moment, so I won't mention their name. Uh, it's fantastic to have Claire Fox with us here. Before we welcome her to the stage, let's just see her video. It really is a watershed moment for democracy. The historic question posed to us is whether we're gonna let democracy be overturned. As Labour's Tony Benn once said, democracy is the most revolutionary thing in the world. Too bloody right. Without it, we are voiceless subjects. With it, we're citizens with the power to change our destinies. Now is the time to take a step forward and to fight for our votes. Every last one of them. Please Welcome to the stage, Claire Fox. It's genuinely exciting to be here. It's genuinely extraordinary, these kind of gatherings and rallies that have been put on by the Brexit party, because we really live in extraordinary times. It's extraordinary that having mobilized millions of us to turn out for the largest democratic vote in British history in a referendum they called our own elected politicians still seek to thwart our decision to leave the EU. It's extraordinary that in plain sight, so many MPs arrogantly indulge in scheming shenanigans and use every trick in the book to subvert our decision. They openly undermine the very idea of voting at all, declaring to each and every one of us that our vote does not count. But if they thought that they'd wear us down, if they thought they'd demoralize us, they were wrong. And it's, a, and it's an absolute credit to the Brexit party, it's a credit to the Brexit party that they are giving people a voice to shout out loudly, our votes count, our votes count. 
course, it's also extraordinary that we even need the Brexit party. These EU elections should not be happening. But, as they are, we need to use them to rekindle and strengthen what that original Brexit vote started. A radical shake-up of politics and a re-energising of democracy. But I also want to share some extraordinary truths that usually kept a little bit secret. My extraordinary secret, number one, is that the Guardian newspaper, that voice piece of the Liberal Remain supporting commentariat, is really a Brexit Party newspaper. Or rather, it should be. Why? Because the Guardian's origins lie in precisely what the Brexit Party is fighting for. The importance of universal suffrage and respecting ordinary people's right to be represented. The Guardian newspaper was founded 200 years ago by a young cotton merchant, John Edward Taylor. He wrote a first-hand account of the Peterloo Massacre in Manchester at which the militia charged at a huge gathering of mill workers and social reformers for daring to demand representation in Parliament. And that young man Taylor was so abhorred by what he witnessed that he set up the Manchester Guardian, committed to political change, truthful reporting and liberty. What went wrong? Why is this Guardian betraying the memory of the Peterloo Martyrs, truthful reporting and liberty? But let me tell you, let me tell you another extraordinary secret. The Guardian has published some very important articles over the last few years. Two very important articles, significantly both anonymous, that admitted that in many professions and workplaces, you are just not allowed to admit that you voted leave. Sadly, that is true particularly in education establishments. And I, as an ex-further education lecturer, education is my passion, so it's particularly annoying that that's happened. In one Guardian article, in the Secret Teacher series, written by a Labour supporting teacher is a tale of our times. That teacher said that he was worried that schools had become echo chambers for a narrow set of socially approved views like voting remain. And to quote him, he said, I have watched teachers react incredulously, almost to the point of tears, when colleagues have tried floating a reasonable case for Brexit. Now that hardly inspires one with confidence that pupils are being encouraged to consider all sides of the arguments in our schools. In another article by an anonymous university lecturer, the headline read, I voted Brexit. Why do academic colleagues treat me like a pariah? And it went on to note universities are supposed to welcome open debate. Yet I worry the fact I voted for Brexit may harm my prospects. What an extraordinary, shameful thing that by admitting that you voted alongside, alongside the majority of your fellow citizens, that is deemed as unacceptable. This is a new form of McCarthyism and we should absolutely reject it. But also, this climate does a real disservice to young people for whom education should be about critical thinking, free and open inquiry. And they are being betrayed, I'm afraid, by a closed-minded, narrow-minded groupthink. But here's another extraordinary secret. All that is changing. Secret Leave voters are coming out and proud in their droves. Inspired by the Brexit Party's diverse range of candidates, look today, we've got doctors, lawyers, dentists, business people, all ethnicities, 
all sexualities, all social backgrounds, everything. This is diversity in practice, in action, not a tick box exercise. And we're from, we're also from across the political spectrum. You've got me with my left-wing background, a free speech advocate. You've got Henrik, a Danish socialist. And we're on the same side, and I mean the same side, as Anne Widdecombe and Nigel Farage. Who'd have thought it, but really please, it's true. And I have noticed, and I have noticed that that kind of political unity is having a big impact and actually a huge impact on many young people who we're told will not be interested in Brexit. But they can see, we can see, everyone can see that this is a radical movement for political change. It doesn't fit neatly into left-right boxes. It cuts across political parties. But we are change and not the party that dares use that word that set itself up. We are the real change. And what's more, what's more, we have another secret army on our side. Who are they? They are many Remain voters who accept the referendum outcome. Those Remain voters, not the hardcore self-styled Remainiacs, those Remain voters, our fellow citizens, our family and our workmates, they're just as abhorred as we are at Parliament's attempts at subverting democracy. And more and more of them are now looking at the Brexit party and see it as a party that will represent their own commitment to popular sovereignty. This is just the tip of the iceberg. My final, my final extraordinary fact, we've got a secret weapon. It's called hope. Hope. Too often, I know anyway, about, about you, over the last three years, I felt so frustrated. I've been so furious. I've become disillusioned, bitter, shouting at the telly from the sofa, sometimes being on the telly and shouting at the sofa. <laughs> but now, at this moment, now we have a chance to be positive. We should use these EU elections to renew our commitment to democracy, to kickstart a new politics, to debate new ideas for the future. Sometimes, let's be honest, the Brexit debate can be a bit negative. We've all been subject to mudslinging, insults, vicious trolling, scurrilous, salacious accusations. It's horrible. And sometimes we want to fight back like with like. But to quote Michelle Obama, not something I do every day, <laughs> when they go low, we go high. <laughs> we are the ones with a message of hope. We are the ones with a mission to restore trust in democracy. Our message is to young and old, lever remainer to every Democrat, is it is worth voting. It is worth being politically engaged. There's a world out there to change for the better and we can do it. But we can only do it if we defend democracy now. So I want you to do something extraordinary, extraordinary on May the 23rd. Vote Brexit Party in your millions. We shall overcome. Thank you, everybody. Claire Fox, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it great? It's fantastic to have Claire with us. And so, ladies and gentlemen, to our penultimate speaker, who is a lawyer, uh, who's worked in international trade negotiations, pharmaceutical industry, 
It is not only is she a lawyer, but actually she comes from a probably a globally unique family where both her parents were judges. And she has five siblings, and all six of the children are lawyers. You can imagine what's discussed at the kitchen table, can't you? <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, <laughs> please welcome to the stage, Elizabeth Babade. Please welcome to the stage, Elizabeth Babade. <laughs> Chester Hello. Claire stole my um my um quote the Michelle Obama one <laughs> but I have another one my dad used to tell me that if you're young and you want to see the sky you need to sit on the shoulders of the elders and this is why I find it so disgraceful the arguments that are being put forward about how, oh, we need to have another people's vote so that the young people who are 16, three years ago can now vote. And then the older ones, I don't know what they were planning to do with the older ones. But um, it's just so funny how history is no longer valued old age gray hair the wisdom of the elders is no longer valued but the fact of the matter is if you go back this these same arguments that we're having today were had i think it was 20 years ago by the labor party and 46 years ago when they were deciding to join the um, economic um, the European co communities this was the same argument that was going on you know and I just find it so sad that history is not being taught in our schools children are not finding out they're not being taught in our um, citadels of learning they're not being taught how we got into the EU because you cannot understand why we want to leave if you don't understand how we got in. And this is, I think, very fundamental. You cannot really understand where you are going if you do not understand where you have been. So I want to call on all of us, especially the grandparents, the parents, I have four kids. Tell your children, tell your grandchildren, sit them down and tell them how we got here and where we can get to. It is so fundamental. Otherwise, we will have the divided nation that we, the, um, the other side want us to have. Now, I'm a Commonwealth trained lawyer, and that means that English law was, a fundam was the basis of when I was being taught constitutional law. And I was taught that the UK has one of the oldest constitutions in the world. But you know the funny thing about the UK constitution? It's unwritten. The American constitution written. Most of the other con Commonwealth countries, their constitutions are written down. Why? Because most of those other countries had to fight for democracy. They, it, was a, it, was, it was not given to them, oh, come and take democracy. They had to fight for it. And as a result, they were already divided at the time of, of um, democracy. So they had to write down the rules. These are the rules by which we are going to play. And then over time, trust developed. And I think, when I think, why didn't the UK have um, a written constitution? Well, I want to think maybe it's because at that time, there was a lot of honor, rightness in the way governance was being um, handled. That's where we get the right honorable. But for some reason, we don't have this rightness and honorable in our parliamentarians we don't have it
our right honorable friends are behaving badly. And that is why we are where we are today. You know, I found it so shocking, um, one of our MMPs who claims to be representing the minority I come from, he says, how can it be undemocratic to ask the people whether they've changed their minds? You see, this is not how democracy works. The way democracy works, you set the rules before you start playing, not while you're playing. the expectation is after you have started playing everyone remembers the rules you don't get to make the rules as you go along as you play the game it, that is not democracy now I remember after the um, referendum we that won it was almost as if we had lost everyone had to tuck their tails between their toes and run away and hide oh wow i voted um leave that is not how democracy works you know i grew up in nigeria we have um in nigeria 250 tribes 250 so you can imagine there is a delicate balance between managing the different um, views and tempers run high sometimes but one thing that is so fundamental is respect you don't need to um, agree with me but you must respect my view now without that underlying respect this is what you get this is what you get what we have in the media and you know imagine if this happened a hundred years ago when people were not so civilized when people settle arguments and disagreements in the in in a violent way it's this this, this is just um, this should not be allowed so yes we're going to vote but I want you to think with me about the need to bring this country together it is so fundamental this is not about i won you lost i'm a lever you're a remainer everybody became a lever on june 23rd night 2016 everyone this this is how democracy works democracy is 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 governance by the majority not by the few so if you lost you should be big enough to say okay i lost this time let me get behind those that won let's see how we're going to make it work i want you to take the brexit party as a microcosm of what the uk can be like did you ever think this would be possible <laughs> ever claire and anne on the same table speaking for the same cause This is what democracy does it unites it makes it creates an environment where it's okay to lose it's okay to win if you lose you didn't lose if you win you didn't win it's all about the common good the common focus the common path we want to go and so I have made it my personal, um, I work in an office where, um, let's just say it's um, Remainer land. <laughs> and I have um, 
I have colleagues that are so vehemently opposed to Brexit. But you know the beautiful thing? We laugh, we talk, we go for lunch. We're still talking to each other. And this is how the country has to be. Now, we're three years behind schedule, but it's not too late to course correct. Brexit will bring out the best in us. I really believe this. See, for those who can only survive when things work, Brexit is a disaster. But I want to tell you, in your personal lives, does everything work? This is normal. This is normal. Disruption is normal. We need to get behind the Brexit idea. We need to sell this. And so today, I'm wrapping up now, I want to call on everyone who voted especially those of you who never voted, who decided you're never gonna vote again, come out on the 23rd of May. Tell your children before the 23rd of May, tell your grandchildren why we're having this battle. It's not about I want to leave, it's not about I want to stay, it's about democracy. The people decided, the people's vote has already taken place. Thank you. Fantastic. Isn't she great? Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Wonderful, passionate enthusiasm. And to our final speaker, ladies and gentlemen, you talk about passion, you talk about energy, and you talk about courage. The courage of these speakers here, putting their head above the parapet. But it's fair to say there's no individual who's had such an influence on UK politics over the last 25 years as the next speaker. The bravery, the courage, the abuse, the vitriol that he has had to endear and receive is extraordinary. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, just when you thought, when people thought that he might be going a bit quiet, I can tell you, he's actually been in training. He's been, I promise you, because I've actually seen it. He's been in training because he knows that this is the biggest battle yet, the battle for democracy, Please welcome, before we welcome him to the stage, let's just look at the video of Nigel in action. We have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit party, and the Brexit party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. Nigel Farage. Hello, Cheshire. And come on, let's be upbeat and optimistic. A big, loud, happy cheer for Harry and Meghan on the birth of their son. Well done! Yeah. I have to tell you, Richard, Mr Chairman, the chances of the baby being named Nigel are quite low <laughs> in my view. Welcome to the Brexit party. Welcome to this party that launched less than five weeks ago. We've appeared like a jack-in-the-box in British politics. We've stunned everybody, the media, our rivals. They can't believe what we have been able to achieve in less than five weeks. And the reason we've done what we've done is because unlike Theresa May, unlike most of Parliament, we in the Brexit party are in touch with 
public opinion. We in the Brexit Party represent public opinion. And we want, we want to make sure that the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation is put into practice. Let's be clear, we want to leave the European Union and get on with the rest of our lives. So you come to one of our events and you won't hear what we can't do. You won't hear how difficult everything is. You won't hear an ounce of negativity on this platform. We believe that Brexit is the greatest opportunity this country has had in our lifetimes. It is once we overcome the current obstacles nearly 651 of them in Westminster I think but it is the chance for us to become once again a proper self-governing democratic nation proud of who we are and in control of our own future it is an opportunity for the rest of the world to once again respect us and I say that because I don't know about you but I've got friends all over the world who simply cannot believe what is going on in our nation they simply can't believe that our leadership haven't got the courage haven't got the confidence don't believe in our country enough to enact Brexit because all Brexit says is that we'll go on being friends with Europe we'll go on trading with Europe but we'll take back the responsibility to make law to choose our own destiny we'll do it ourselves confident we're good enough and what Theresa May has done to us frankly is nothing short, in my view, of a national humiliation. She begs in front of Monsieur Barnier, meets his every demand, allows herself to be mocked and parodied by Donald Tusk, and of course, writes letters to Jean-Claude Juncker, in which she calls him your excellency <laughs> an unelected foreign bureaucrat is to our prime minister your excellency so this party is all about putting aside those negatives this party is all about saying we are a great country and we're unashamed to stand up and be patriotic and say we're british and we believe that's the best way to be So we're giving you, we're going to give you a real choice in these elections. Elections, of course, that should never have happened. Why? Because we voted Brexit back in June 2016. And that leaflet, do you remember that leaflet that David Cameron sent through every letterbox in the country? Do you even remember David Cameron? <laughs> That leaflet, which cost nearly 10 million quid of your money, told us, however we voted, the result would be respected. And of course, in a democratic country, how could it have said different? But we also, a year after that, voted in a general election in which both the Labour and Conservative parties told us they would honour the result of the referendum. And then we saw 498 MPs vote for Article 50. And what it said is we'd leave on March the 29th. Remember that date? March the 29th. And we'd leave on that date with 
or without a withdrawal agreement. We should have left on March the 29th. But we haven't. After that, this hapless, useless, duplicitous Prime Minister told us we'd leave on April the 12th and then it became by the 30th of June and now she tells us we'll leave on the 31st of October Halloween <laughs> trick or treaty come on <laughs> folks the truth of it is left to their own devices this government and this parliament if we leave it to them we will never, ever leave the European Union in any meaningful form. And that is why I founded the Brexit Party. It's why I am so... It's why I'm so thrilled and so honoured to have people of this calibre with me on the platform this afternoon. This is not about left or right, it's about right or wrong. This is the fight back. So we present you on May the 23rd here in the Northwest with a choice. You've seen and heard our candidates. How could you for a moment doubt their honesty, their sincerity, their belief in democracy, their belief in our country and their belief that this Brexit vote must be carried out. But you might of course be tempted to vote for other parties. Well of course you've got Chucker and his chums haven't you? Change UK they call themselves with a party logo that looks like a Sainsbury's checkout barcode <laughs> who actually don't want to change anything at all. No, we'll write them off for the moment. But you could in the North West be tempted to vote for a Conservative Party that says it wants to deliver Brexit. They keep saying it, don't they? Mrs May keeps saying. In fact, Mrs May said 108 times we leave on the 29th of March but she still tells us we'll take back control of our borders our laws and our money I think they wind her up at the back in the morning <laughs> and send her out to say it I mean and she a vicar's daughter I mean really really no I won't use that word I'll call it duplicitous instead I'll get away with that but if you want to vote Conservative here in the North West, you're very welcome to. Your lead candidate is none other than Sajid Kareem. He's the top of the list for the Conservatives in the North West. And guess what? Guess what? He's a Remainer. And he backs a second referendum because he doesn't respect the result of the first one. And maybe you're tempted, I don't know. Maybe you're tempted by Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party. Because they say they respect the result of the referendum. Well, let me tell you, if you think the Tories have betrayed our trust over Brexit, in some ways, Labour have done it every bit, if not even worse. Even worse. The leading three candidates for the Labour Party here in the North West. They're all sitting MEPs. They're all asking you to re-employ them. Unlike me, who spent 20 years being the turkey that votes for Christmas. I can't believe I'm standing again for a job I don't actually want, but there we are. But the three sitting Labour MPs who are top of the list here in the North West, guess what their view on Brexit is? Amen. They're all Remainers and they all support a second referendum. So if you believe 
that we should leave the European Union. If you believe that we should take back control of our fishing waters. If you believe that Juncker and the gang can go whistle for their 39 billion. If you believe that there's a bigger world out there than just Europe, a bigger world than just 7% of the world's population, a bigger world than just 15% of global GDP, a bigger world who we should be able to reach out to, to reconnect with, to form bonds with, and wouldn't the 2.4 billion people living within the Commonwealth be a very good place for this country to start. <clears throat> and as many would say, a closer relationship with America might not be a bad idea too. I don't know about you, but I'd rather put the future trust and security of this country with the Five Eyes Intelligence Service and with our bond with America in NATO than I would with any European army led by Brussels. But in the end, this vote on May the 23rd, this movement that we started and created is actually about far more than just freeing ourselves from the bonds of Brussels. This is now about something much bigger, about something more fundamental. This is about who we are as a country. We've had the longest form of parliamentary government of any nation on the planet. We have a parliament that is known around the world as the mother of parliaments. We are the people who dispersed of the greatest empire the world had ever seen and we gave our model of government to them. This is about who we are as a country. It's about how the rest of the world sees us. It's about handing on to our children, to our grandchildren, those liberties and freedoms under democracy and the rule of law that our forebears twice stood up, fought for and sacrificed so much in the 20th century. That is how big, that is how important, that is how fundamental this campaign is. For us in the Brexit party, May the 23rd is not about a protest vote. It's not about sticking up two fingers to the establishment. Tempting, of course, though that is to do. For us, this is something much bigger. This is about us wanting to change politics for good. May the 23rd is for us the first day in a big, ambitious attempt to remould and reshape British politics. Our politics is broken. Our two-party system serves nothing but itself. Our parliament is out of touch with our people. Our government willfully betrays us. We need a peaceful political revolution in this country. That is why we're here with the Brexit party. Now we, on this platform, we all believe in this. The question is, are you with us? Yeah. Will you join us? Will you support us? Yeah. Will, you, will you spread the message out where you live? Yeah. And are we, gonna, are we gonna begin? Yeah. Are we gonna begin on the 23rd of May by winning these European elections? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it great?
I told you he hadn't gone away and he's definitely not lost his touch. Now, we've just got time for a few questions uh, that people gave as they came in. The first one I'll deal with, um, it's from Andrew from the Wirral. I put a bet on Nigel being the next Prime Minister. Was, was, my, was my money well invested? Well, if everybody votes for the Brexit party, the answer is yes. But I tell you what, I tell you what, Andrew, I'll say this to you. To become a registered subscriber of the Brexit party costs £25. All right? And in the five weeks we've been going, already over 85,000 people have signed up to become registered supporters of this party. And for once, I won't talk about whether something is a good bet or a bad bet. I would say this to you. If you want this country to be independent, democratic, self-governing, and proud of who it is, that £25 to become a registered supporter of the Brexit party is the best investment in this country's future you can ever make. So the second question is from Sandra from Bolton. Sandra, are you here? Um, Sandra from Bolton says, and I'm going to ask Anne this, please. Um, was I stupid voting to leave? <laughs> you would get a terrible shock if I said yes, wouldn't you? No, you weren't stupid voting to leave, and nor were the 17.4 million other people who voted to leave. Where we were stupid was, we trusted the politicians to deliver it. As always with Anne, you know exactly where she stands on any issue. No nonsense. Um, a question here for Nigel. Um, Nigel, how will Brexit help the fishing industry? Oh, well, I think um, Heinrich dealt with that earlier perfectly. Um, it is an absolute tragedy that an island like ours, surrounded by sea, and we've given away 60% plus by value of the fish that swim in our seas. But worse than that, we have a management regime, which means we dump back dead tens of thousands of tons of prime fish into our seas every single year. Uh, this regulation doesn't just apply to commercial fishing, it applies now to anglers as well. And you've only got to look across the North Sea to see the Norwegians, who manage their own industry. A bit further north, the Faroese, the Icelandics, leaving the European Union, taking back control of our territorial waters, getting rid of this crazy quota system where we throw back fish dead, it will be environmentally better and it'll bring back tens of thousands of jobs to our coastal communities who need it very badly. Thank you. Now, uh, Bev from Hartford, and I think this is for you, Anne. Um, uh, could Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, between them, could they cancel the European elections? Well, they can only do that if they deliver Brexit. And at the moment, I think the chances of that are pretty well zero. But that is the only circumstance under which these elections can be cancelled, is if we actually leave the European Union. And on that basis, all I can say is I wish they would be cancelled. But, but, leaving the European Union means leaving in actuality, not just in name. And if they were to cancel these elections on the grounds that we'd left, when in reality, we hadn't left at all, then we will show them at the next general election that that's one they can't cancel. Thank you. And thank you, Anne. And to my final question, ladies and gentlemen, Charles from Wrexham. Nigel, why is Theresa May insistent on getting a deal? What's wrong with no deal? Well, uh, the answer is, nothing and it's not a deal this idea that it's theresa may's deal it's not theresa may's deal 
it's Monsieur Barnier's treaty, which he wrote with the real boss, Mrs. Merkel, looking over his shoulder. And it is, it is, because I know Barnier. I know Barnier. I know all these people from my job in the European Parliament. One or two of you may have seen some of my speeches that I've given there over the years. No, no, no. I've always tried to be as helpful and constructive as I can be at all times. I think I've enjoyed the 20 years a lot more uh, than they have, although they haven't seen Widdicombe yet, have they? So, I mean, let's see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Barnier walks around in Brussels with the leather bound document under his arm. He says at every given opportunity, this is a treaty. It is a legally binding international treaty. It has a clause and provision within it, which means we may never be able under its terms to leave it. Arguably what May has signed us up to is in many ways, or attempted to sign us up to, is in many ways even worse than the existing European treaty. I did not fight for 25 years to ditch the European treaties to be signed into a new set of European treaties. I'll be damned if that is going to happen. And leaving, leaving on WTO terms is of course painted out by the giant multinationals as being some kind of disaster. The truth of it is, most of our global trade is done on WTO terms. We trade with America on WTO terms. We trade with China on WTO terms. And of course, if we leave on WTO terms, you know that the EU will be running down the street after us wanting a trade deal. Why? Because one in three Mercedes that are sold outside, uh, outside of Germany are sold in this country. Why? Because we buy 110 million bottles of Spanish Prosecco, uh, sorry, Italian Prosecco every year. They sell far more to us than we do to them. But the way you negotiate is from a position of strength. Our clueless Prime Minister, our career politicians, people who've never done, people who've never done a proper day's work in their lives, who've never worked in trade and business, and who've listened, have listened to and followed a civil service who've given up all pretense of neutrality have led us to this disaster. And I want to say this, one of the things you'll see amongst the Brexit party candidates, we've got many people in our ranks, men and women, entrepreneurs, business people, people who do deals every day of their lives. We would make a much better job of Britain's future than the Muppets doing it right now. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, let's have all your boards up in the air. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Louder. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Thank you very much indeed. Have a very safe trip home and a great rest of the bank holiday. Thank you.